Hi, everyone. My name is. Hi, everyone. My name is Alexander Fergano, and I'm a cybersecurity analyst with BKB Innovative. Um, today, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself, um, how I got to the role that I'm working in today, and a little bit about what I do on a daily basis at DKB and uh, the dark web. I'm going to teach you about the dark web a little bit. Yeah. Um, if you if you can wait if you can wait until the end to have uh, like if you have questions or anything like that, I can answer them for you. Okay. So growing up. Um, like most of you probably, I, I grew up and playing, you know, video games and uh, learning how to. I worked on computers and like I got a real big interest in in, in technology because it was something that was new and exciting for me um, as I grew up and it led me into this field uh, of cybersecurity and uh, it's it's really cool. So like one of the first times I ever had the opportunity to uh, experience something like that, I was playing Halo, um, which Halo, is. Baby. I, I was playing Halo, right? And uh, th there was a way, Halo, Halo One. There was a way I could uh, I could kick people out of the game online um, by uh, sending them packets and pushing them out of the server. Um, so that was one of the first times, like experiences I ever had with uh, with anything like uh, cybersecurity, IT related, right? Um, just learning how to do all that. Uh, I went so I went to NCTC. Um, this is the this is my alma mater. I graduated last last semester um, with my associates in cybersecurity, and I got the opportunity to intern at DKB and then go to be full time with uh, every uh, with DKB as an employee, which I'm very grateful for. All right, um, so we're going to go into the presentation now. I'm going to teach you guys a little bit about the dark web, like what is the dark web and why you should care about what it is. So the dark web, the dark web has a bunch of challenges that come from businesses, right? So today, um, the dark web is used for a lot of different things. It can be used for, uh, it can be had like a lot of illegal information is sold on the dark web, and we need to keep that information off of that for businesses. And some of these reasons are because of compliance requirements. Um, you need highly educated staff to keep that information off of it. Um, it's it's got a lot of other problems, like uh, it's full of the, just a lot of things that businesses don't need information on that dark web. Um, so smoke and mirrors is like, uh, it, let's say like if we're, actually if we wanna hold the questions till the end and I can answer it all for you then, okay? So we can just get through this really quick, okay? Um, so let's continue. So some of the challenges that you might face, right, on a daily basis is if, let's say, you're on the internet and you get some emails that don't look um, that don't look good, or you click on something that doesn't really look above par, which is like good, right? And sometimes you'll you'll start receiving these things, or it asks you to type in your password, right? You don't want to do that because if you start doing that, they might get some of your personal information, and if they get some of your personal information, this could be very bad. They could use this to log into your emails. Um, they could use this to they could use this to log into your, let's say, your social media, whether it be like your Facebook, your Instagram, your Snapchat, um, uh, I don't even, uh, and some other things like that. Um, and it, it, even though most hackers seem like they go after bigger fish, like companies or anything like that, in general, bad actors or hackers will go after anything they can to make money, right? And if they can get your personal information, that's worth some money. And where they'll go to sell that personal information is the dark web. Um, so things that they can sell on there would be something like stolen credit cards, um, your personal information, which could be your social security. Um, it could be your email even. It could be your name and your date of birth. Um, and they, what they can do with that is they can open up accounts without your consent. So even, even though adults, we have, we have to face that problem all the time where we don't want to lose this information because they can open all these, all these pertinent, like all these, uh, all these different cards or anything like that, it could, be really, it could be really bad for people. Also, the information that they could get from this is they could use that to get into your work information as well, such as, your business email, um, your logins for uh, certain applications that your company uses, and they could steal, um, you know, secure information that can't get leaked out there that could be sold on the dark web. So, cybersecurity workers are in very high demand right now uh, because 
Like, I don't know if any of you watched the news, but in the last month, there was an oil pipeline hack. Um, there was a ransomware that occurred um, where uh, a group called Darkside had actually hacked into this oil pipeline and, and put some ransomware on their, on their environment and said, we, will, we won't open this back up to you. We won't give you your information back or let this oil pipeline work unless you pay us money. Um, and no, um, they they actually they hacked a pipeline, and when they hacked that pipeline, uh, it made. So when they hacked that pipeline, they asked uh, what they did was is it made gas prices go up. So if you ever heard your parents talking about oh why are my gas prices going up, it's because of that ransomware that occurred on this oil pipeline. So that's why right now uh, companies are in looking for more cybersecurity professionals so they can prevent this from happening because as, as everything continues to evolve, this will continue to happen in the world we live in. So one thing that hackers really like to do is they like to target small businesses. And the reason they like to target small businesses is because they're easy, right? So you know, bigger businesses have a lot of, have a lot of employees, they have a lot of people that are there to uh, protect against this. They spend a lot of money to prevent hacking from occurring, right? Whereas, Whereas small businesses, they don't have the funds to be able to do that. So that's why, that's why hackers will specifically go after small businesses and then turn around and sell the information that they get from them on the dark web. On this next page, um, it'll show like why um, it's on the rise and I kind of just explained that because they just want to easier to attack. Now as far as what it looks like when you get ransomware, if you see something like this, this is what will happen. So you'll see, you'll see this is, your computer's locked, you can't do anything. This is the screen you'll see, and what'll happen is, is how do I recover my files, right? Well, this little address down here is a, is a blockchain address. So this is probably the attacker's wallet, right? So they want, they want the person that's affected with the ransomware to send them however much Bitcoin or Ethereum or any other cryptocurrency that they can so they can get paid. And once you've paid, it unlocks or decrypts the, the ransomware, which will let you have your computer back. But you just paid, you know, however much money to get it back. And, and then you still have the opportunity to have your information still sold on the dark web because, well, it's already been compromised. So, and why the dark web is amplifying the problem is because the dark web creates a huge area for, um, for attackers or even just bad people in general to go and sell information. So there's a couple different things that are sold on the dark web, um, which can be, let's see, <laughs> which can be, uh, collection of, so it's a collection of sites that create anonymous internet marketplace. Um, so the Tor browser is used to access this because this isn't the normal internet. Uh, the internet that you see on a daily basis is about 10 to 15% of what the actual internet is. Um, the rest of it is other, is 85% um, of what they call the dark web because it's not naturally accessible through with a web browser. And then you have um, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is used to, to trade and to buy on that dark web. So what, what is contained in the dark web? So dark web. So they have a couple different things. They have illegal trade and illicit activities. They sell you know drugs and weapons on there. Um, they also sell um, human trafficking, kidnapping, um, other stuff like that. They also do organized crime and terrorism. This is a place where all bad people can go around and actually get together and speak to each other without having to worry about the police, you know, coming and knocking on their door because you know they're behind a computer and they can get what they want done, and that's and that's not good. Um, they also have other things. You can also purchase like hacking as a service, stolen credit cards, um, identity and credential sales. Um, so <laughs> And it shows like some of the what some of the dark web looks like, where you can actually go and buy these credit cards and other information uh, that people have stolen from one another. So, as we continue, um, 
one of the best things you can do to prevent against your information from being stolen and then sold on the dark web is your passwords. So you wanna have, you wanna have a strong password. It's recommended that you have a password that's about 12 characters long with uh, a capital letter, a lowercase letter, and a special character, right? So, and try not to reuse like words that are, that you have, like don't use like your birthday, um, don't use like your, your dog's name, your mother's maiden name, you know, anything like that. Nothing that can be found on social media or that's used like naturally in your day to day life. You wanna keep it pretty obscure from what you, from what you normally, what you normally do. <coughs> so 80% of hacks and breaches are stolen from weak passwords, like I had originally said. And um, when that happens, um, you know, websites get hacked. Uh, using it, you can, they can sell those credentials on the dark web, which is then used to try to get into your information at work. Um, and then you don't even know that it's stolen at the end of the day. So sometimes, have you ever gotten emails, like um, if you have an email, have you ever gotten emails that have said, oh, you've been logged onto this website and you've never even seen that website before or your password's been reset? That's part of, that's part of what happens is that someone found your password and, it's, uh, and it, was used, it was used before and it was sold on the dark web. <coughs> But there's good news. Um, these can be uh, so if you if you don't use those same passwords and they are stored, what I recommend doing is getting what's called a password manager. So these are these are things like uh, that you have one centralized password that stores all your other passwords, right? So you don't have to remember like every different password for everything you're doing. Um, so like I use one, I use one of, that's called LastPass. So what LastPass does is it lets, me, it lets me have one central password that I have to remember and then everything else that I use, it's, it's saved in that, in that um, password manager. So it's, if, I forget, if I forget one of them, it'll be stored there. I just have to remember one of them. Plus it makes it more secure for everybody else because um, it's just not, you don't, have every, you don't have to forget and you don't have to change your stuff all the time. So some things that are easy to protect your password, you could have um, what happens at companies usually is we have security awareness training, phishing tests and email protection. Uh, we enforce password policies. Uh, this is done through um, Active Directory and a couple of other things where, um, where it just makes sure that you can't have a password that is smaller than a certain length or it, it has to have um, special characters or um, capitalized letters or lowercase letters. And then multi-factor authentication. If you guys have the opportunity for anything, I highly recommend using multi-factor authentication. This will make sure that if anyone tries to log into your stuff from anywhere in the world, right, you'll, get, you'll have to get a secondary, um, secondary form of authentication to be able to access that website or that email or, or anything along those lines. That's the next step that everyone should take is getting M MFA or multi-factor authentication. Um, like I talked about earlier was the password management uh, tools. Those are really good. Uh, I, like I said, I use one personally in my day-to-day -day, um, day -day work and personal life, so I highly recommend that. Um, so one thing that we do at DKB Innovative is we have a tool, right, that's called Dark Web ID, and what Dark Web ID does is it scans the dark web, right, and it looks for people's emails that we do business for, and by and what it does is when those emails are found in these in on the dark web in these and uh, what's being sold, it will alert DKB to say, hey, your email was found um, on these websites. We recommend you change it because you never know. Like you have the chance of having your information stolen. So that's one thing that we that we continuously do is we have that and that and we get alerts on that on a daily basis. So these hackers don't sleep. They're always looking for their next their next buck, right? They're always looking for their next um, their next hit. So one thing that one thing that I really like is uh, treat your passwords like your underpants. Change them often, don't share them, and don't leave them lying around. 
because because they're very important, right? You wouldn't get you wouldn't give your underpants away to anyone away to anyone else. So why would you give your passwords away to? You?